Hello, beautiful people. It's your girl, Nesa, with Expansive Taste. Here, we expand our realities to ultimate greatness and learn to receive the best out of life. So today, we're talking about haters and how they really don't matter and how maybe the biggest problem you might be facing might be you and your mindset. And we're going to try to talk about how we can fix that. So this is motivated by a song I released um, to my haters called Your Greatest Enemy. And it goes, you can't stand to see a smile on my face. It pains you. It consumes you. Lights too bright. So you hide behind your shame. It breaks you, controls you. Pray on downfalls. Dream to be in my place. Premeditated. Do you know why you hate? Unsatiate. The hole in you escaping. I hope you can escape it. Free yourself from this space your greatest enemy is you. In this song, I'm recognizing that there are some people in my life who have had negative feelings towards me. Um, probably not very justified, but it's mostly because they have been jealous for some reason or um, they see the kind of light that I carry and it brings too much attention to their own darkness. And I don't want anyone to feel this way um, about me. In fact, like I have been in situations where throughout my life I would dim my own light because I didn't want it to be a reason why someone else would feel uncomfortable. I didn't want anyone to feel like they were in competition with me because my intention was never to be better than anyone. And throughout my life, I did learn that there are certain things that I would do that would make people feel um, lesser than. And so I would have to remind myself, okay, I can't dance too well, or, you know, the people in the friend group might not look as good, or I can't let them know how smart I am or share the information that I know too much because then they're going to think I'm a know-it-all. And I guess I can't let her know that he was hitting on me too because I can see that she wants all the attention. But I think the thing that has pissed the people off the most is how nice and positive I am. Um, that has annoyed a lot of people because they can't seem to understand why I would react in certain ways and, you know, be so optimistic about life and have such a good attitude um, because it's it shines light on the fact that they're a negative thinker and that they make too many excuses in their lives. Um, and especially when they learn about some of the things I went through, they just don't seem to understand how could I experience some of these things and still keep a smile on my face. And how can I be so strong-willed that I'm able to pursue my dreams and make music and have the audacity to be a published author? Um, how can I do that without the support, without the resources, without the connections? Why is she still going? Why is she still pushing? Um, why does she have so much life in her? And I got to say, it's not for me. It's... Um, you know, I can give you some basic tips, but the main reason why I am the way I am, why haters do not affect me, why pain and trauma does not affect me is because of who God is. God is the one who showed me how loved I am. He's the one who showed me how worthy I am. He's the one who protected me from life-threatening situations and from me completely destroying myself in toxic relationships. God is the one who protected me from all of this and who has continued to bless me um, throughout my life. Every time I would turn back to God, my life would be restored. And yeah, it's like a reset button. All of a sudden, you know, I feel whole again and my life is in order again and I'm at peace and I'm able to see the next steps. Um, and I'm able to move on and progress. It's because I keep looking at God. I keep turning back to him that I am able to go as far as I go. So how I feel about haters is that they're simply missing God in their life. They don't understand how loved they are. They don't understand how worthy they are. 
they don't know that they don't have to struggle in this world. They can depend on the Lord. They can use his strength. They can use his guidance. They don't have to be confused. They don't have to look at other people and watch them pass them by. Like they don't have to stand at the sideline because they don't know where to go because they're so lost because, you know, they're trying to hustle and find their own ways, try to find their own paths, but it's just leading to further and further destruction. That's where they are at. And all I want for them is to find God so that they don't have to feel so alone and so lost and like everyone else is surpassing them and they don't have to fill their heart with hate. That, you know, that's what's keeping them away from God. The fact that instead of looking at these people and seeing the glory of God, seeing that the light that is in him or seeing the light that is in others through him, instead of seeing God's light in others, they want to run from it. They want to shame it. They want to say it's delusional. It's crazy, but they are not accepting the fact that they are worthy of having that too. I think the problem is mostly them not realizing that they are not, they don't feel like they are worthy of receiving that love, that light. That was something I experienced too. After I was assaulted, I didn't think that I was worthy and I really felt like God hated me. Um, and I was only in that situation because God hated me um, and that he would not, he would want nothing to do with me. And I really felt like the worst person ever who was just completely worthless. Um, and although I wasn't someone who was like particularly jealous of that many people, at least I don't think so. I don't feel like I had that much hate in my heart, but I mostly had that hate for myself. Um, and I didn't realize that I was actually worthy of receiving God's love and his comfort until, you know, a particular moment in church. And that was life changing for me. Um, but unfortunately, like, you know, uh, you know, I, I get distracted. Um, there, there are just other things that happen in life and you get distracted. Um, then you just have to go back to God and find that feeling again. And it's always there. So I know that if anyone has any hate in their heart for me, um, it's because they don't have peace. And I pray that they are able to receive some peace um, and find God. But that is also not my responsibility. I cannot be worried about how other people feel about me. And I cannot let that be a reason why I choose not to shine my light, why I choose to not walk in my purpose, um, why I choose to just like hide in the background and not do what I'm called to do. That cannot stop me anymore. I once was, you know, very timid and I did not want to stand out and I wanted to be invisible and I wanted to settle for the bare minimum, but that cannot be me anymore. And now that I know of the God I serve, I know that I can receive joy abundantly. I can receive peace abundantly. I can receive stability abundantly. I can receive um, wealth abundantly. So now I know it's my responsibility to protect that relationship that I have with God. Um, and that starts with repentance. So you have to repent of your sins. And um, that means a lot of things. But to simplify it, I'm going to let you know that repent means to change your mind. You have to be able to change your mind and to start to think in the way that God designed you to think so that you could trust him. So things like if you don't believe that God loves you, if you don't believe that he knew you in your mother's womb, if you don't believe that he has a plan for you, if you have doubt, doubt is a sin. So you need to repent of that sin. Repent that feeling of doubt that you have because you are doubting God's word and that that's it's not okay. Stop doubting God's words. He loves you. He knows you. He has a plan for you. So repent so that you can change your mind and begin to understand that. And there are things that you know you are doing that are self-sabotaging. Like you can't even deny it. It's not even like about religion. Like you know that sleeping with that person isn't good for you because they are, they're not good for you. Um, you know that drinking that alcohol isn't good for you. You know that taking that drug isn't good for you, but you're still doing it. You are sabotaging yourself. And that is something that you need to repent so that you can change your mind about how you think about these things so that you can walk away from them. Your greatest enemy 
is you. It's you believing the lies that are being told about you. It's you self-sabotaging your health. It's you spending your money irresponsibly. It's you burning all the bridges across your family, your acquaintances, your friends. It's you that is hurting you. The thing is, you have free will and nobody can really force you to do anything. Nobody can make you overeat. Nobody can make you sleep around. Nobody can make you cuss people out. Yes, there is temptation in the world. There is great temptation. People will trigger you. People will wave your your vices in your face. Um, but it's up to you to say no. It's up to you to decide what is good for you and what you should avoid. So make the choices that are good for you. Make the choices that empower you. Um, do not have fear. Do not let fear hold you back from the things that you truly desire. Um, a lot of people will instill doubts and that's just, it's not for you. If they are hating on your dream, if they are, you know, telling you that whatever you're trying to do is unrealistic or a waste of time, don't worry about them. That's just what they're saying because they wish they had the audacity. Um, but you know who you are and you know that you are worthy and that you are loved and that if you are seeking God, that he will guide your steps and you cannot fail with God and that no weapon formed against you will prosper. If you are covered by the blood of Jesus, the evil eye that is sent your way, it cannot touch you. The witchcraft that is sent your way, it cannot hurt you. I do encourage you to pray every day, to talk to God and, uh, you know, collaborate. God is the, the best collaborator for sure, the best connection, the best resource. Um, so you got to talk to him to figure out what the best path for your life is um, and what his plan is for you because it's far greater than what you can imagine. And I do encourage you to fast. Fasting makes your mind sharper. It allows your body to die so that you are not like a slave to your flesh and you are not tempted of the things of the world. Um, yeah, you. it's a whole lot easier to just say no to the excess crap when you are fasting because you've already said no to food and now like now that your body is just kind of like you know it's kind of lowered its control over you and so now your mind has control over your body your mind has control over your actions it has control over so much more and it's much more connected to god god's connection i guess like you you can communicate with him easier you can hear him better um when you're fasting so that's an amazing thing to start doing and to keep practicing as you're in your journey with christ and i want to remind you again the haters do not matter they cannot do anything to you what they are experiencing is something that they need to figure out in their own relationships with god but they cannot do anything to you your life is your responsibility it's your responsibility to change the way you think it's your responsibility to change your actions and to better your lives in the ways that you can control it you cannot control how other people feel about you you cannot control what other people do to you but you can control who you choose to be, who you believe in, who you trust in. Um, yeah, you can control all of that. So work on that because that's, um, yeah. When that part is settled, um, you will begin to understand that really nothing can stop you except for death. Really, that's it. Yeah, so I do think that's all I have for you today. Thank you for making it to this point of the video. I really appreciate you. Um, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. I need your support. So interact with this video. Um, and that's all, beautiful people. I send you my love. Mwah. Bisous.